Hi everyone, this is Anna Lührmann and uh, I'm an assistant professor at the University of Gothenburg and the deputy director of the Varieties of Democracy Institute. I will talk to you today about the third wave of autocratization and what's new about it. I will also define the term and uh, by the end of this lecture you will know basically how democracy has developed globally over uh, the last decades. The lecture will be about uh, one hour. Now, do you think the world is more or less democratic than 10 years ago? Think about that question and perhaps take a note uh, on a piece of paper. So are more countries now democratic? Are the countries that are democratic more democratic? Are more autocracies, did they become uh, democratic or uh, did countries revert to autocracy? So take a note uh, of this. In order to answer this question, we at the Varieties of Democracy Institute have asked more than 3,000 global uh, experts that are from the country uh, typically uh, that uh, they uh, assess. So we promote global standards, but uh, access and aggregate local knowledge on this. Uh, and the reason uh, or how we're doing this is that uh, we um, ask those, uh, those country experts to answer uh, specific questions about the quality of democratic institutions in their countries. And then we aggregate that in a sophisticated custom-built IRT model. We've won an award for the best data set from the American um, Political Science Association in 2016. And that testifies that our strategy of data collection uh, works because it's very difficult to actually, uh, as one person, and it's probably something that you uh, were thinking about uh, when you tried to answer the question I posed earlier, um, as one person, it's very difficult to just know for all of the 181 countries that we cover in our data set how democratic they are in each different aspect of democracy. So that's uh, in why we are asking these 3,000 country experts and why we are using then this IRT model that helps us also to take into account that maybe one person sees civil society to be free and fair at a different threshold, at a different standard than uh, another person. So what we have in our data set coverage from 1900 to today and we do everything very transparently. Um, so we, you can uh, understand how uh, we aggregate the data, uh, the protocol for how we ask the experts, and then the end result is also available uh, in free and easy online tools at our website, uh, www.v-dem.net. Here you see a sample expert question uh, that uh, these experts uh, assess every year uh, for us. Uh, and these expert questions are very, very detailed. So we don't ask people to assess how democratic do you think your country is, because everybody has a different understanding for what uh, democracy is. Uh, instead, we ask them something uh, about very, very specific uh, aspects, explain it also in detail what we mean with that. For example, here we uh, ask to what extent does the government achieve control over entry and exit by civil society organizations into public life? So that really is supposed to uh, tell us something about uh, the um, uh, freedom of association in a country. And the answer options goes uh, typically in a five point scale. So here it ranges from monopolistic control to unconstrained um, uh, access by civil society organizations. So uh, one year in this case would be something like North Korea and unconstrained would maybe be Sweden uh, in 2019. You also see that, for example, Hungary uh, has um, uh, exerted minimal control over civil society organizations between 2007 and 12, and then afterwards moved on to moderate control because it makes life increasingly difficult for civil society organizations. Now, here is finally the answer to um, that question that I posed to you, is the world more or less democratic um, uh, than 10 years ago, um, building on VDEM data. So here you see uh, the development of the Liberal Democracy Index. Uh, and the Liberal Democracy Index is an index that we use to really comprehensively show 
not only um, the um, uh, quality of uh, the electoral part of democracy, but also the liberal part of democracy. That means the um, extent to which the rule of law is respected, the uh, parliaments can oversee the government, the judiciary can oversee the government, and this is the liberal democracy index. And here on the left-hand slide, you see or on the left-hand panel, you can see that uh, indeed uh, the uh, number of autocratizing countries has been rising. This is the red line over the last um, uh, yeah, 10, uh, 20 years or so. And now uh, we have uh, about 26 countries that are autocratizing. That means they have been are less democratic than 10 years earlier. And um, uh, fewer countries are democratizing over the last 10 years. So this is only like 22 countries. This is the uh, purple line. And you see the, the nice uh, spike of the purple line uh, around the 1990s when we had the big democratization movements after the fall of the Soviet Union. So um, this was the third wave, the peak of the third wave of democratization. That's what you see here. But now uh, we say we are uh, in a, a demo, an autocratization process for the last decades, as seen by the rising, uh, this rising uh, figure here. On the right hand side now, you see this um, basically the same an analysis weighted by population. So, um, uh, whereas uh, the left hand um, graph actually assumes that all countries are the same. Uh, the right-hand graph weighs them um, by their population size. That means that a country like Malta, that uh, has uh, uh, only very few inhabitants, um, gets weighted less than a country like, let's say, Russia, that has m much more inhabitants. So we can actually say something about how uh, the average global citizen is experiencing uh, the the development of democracy over the last 10 years. And you can see that here we have a big, big spike uh, in the last um, uh, years. Uh, so about one third of the world's population now lives in an autocratizing country. And that is very worrisome because these big countries are countries like the United States, are countries like um, Brazil, like Russia, that are not only big, but also have a lot of uh, role model function and influence over their neighbors or other countries in the world. So we can assume because those countries are moving in that direction that uh, potentially also other countries are following suit over the next years. So this is really a very worrisome development. And with this analysis, we even uh, made it onto the last week uh, tonight show uh, with uh, John Oliver uh, uh, in, back in 2018, where he po really points out uh, what I just told you, that one third of the world's population is living in a declining uh, democracy. So, uh, yeah, a worrisome finding that, that rightly also uh, made it onto television. This graph now looks at the development uh, specifically in the OCE world. And uh, this is the uh, purple line. Uh, it shows the average liberal democracy index over the last uh, 118 years. Um, so the x-axis is the time and the y-axis is the level of the liberal democracy index. Low values always mean uh, less dem democracy. High values mean uh, a high level of democracy. So uh, what you can see here is that um, over uh, that, I mean, first of all, good news, apart from here, the, the World War uh, II and, and uh, its uh, outfall, we uh, have seen a steady uh, improvement of democracy in the OSCE world. But now, unfortunately, we see a dip um, over the last years. And this is uh, something that, that, that is concerning because often, particularly in the practice of, practice of democracy promotion that, that we see uh, democracy aid, for example, that's given given by by donors such as Germany or the EU, that targets typically non the non OCE world, but actually um, the OCE world is a place that we need to worry about. Uh, also compared to the rest of the world, where we have seen a steady improvement of democracy since, since the 1980s, about and uh, now a plateau, but. Uh, not this average decline that, that we're seeing in the OCE world. Now, 
as political scientists, of course, we want to um, actually uh, uh, understand this trend better. So we need to look at the research field, field. We want to understand what exactly is happening. We want to understand why is this happening. And this is uh, why we need to look at the literature. Now, we have seen a new study of uh, a new generation of studies on autocratization. For example, here a piece by Ellen Lust and Waltner that gives a very good uh, literature review uh, from 2018. And Nancy Bermeo's uh, groundbreaking piece in 2016 in the Journal of Democracy, where she really points out some of these uh, new features of this new trend of, of autocratization or democratic backsliding, as she calls it. And um, I would really recommend uh, to all of you to read these two pieces. Then also we have a lot of um, books uh, that were published in last years with really uh, dramatic titles like How Democracies Die uh, and the such. Uh, also these books um, give some really good insights. Now, in all this literature, we can see a consensus that autocratization or democratic backsliding has become more gradual in recent years. Uh, and uh, the military coups, the sudden declines of democracy, the sudden removal of democratically elected leaders is uh, more something of the past, something of the 60s and 70s maybe. However, what we lack is a conceptual and empirical um, consensus about uh, uh, how to diagnose uh, this gradual uh, autocratization and we also lack the tools to do so. We also see a disagreement in the literature about how wide and deep this trend of autocratization actually cuts. So is this something really to worry about, as, as we say, or is this maybe just a, a minor fluctuation, uh, and some signs of instability, as some other people say? So uh, what is happening? In order to address this question, we have published this piece uh, a third wave of autocratization is here, what is new about it, in the Journal of Democratization. And uh, what we do in this piece is we um, provide a new definition and a conceptualization of autocratization. We uh, also operationali operationalize something that we call autocratization episodes. I will explain that to you uh, more in detail in a minute. And uh, we do a systematic analysis of uh, contemporary autocratization in an historical perspective. So we really tell you what is actually happening and how has it changed from before. First, let's start with the definition of the key terms. When I talk about democracy here, I mean a very ambitious understanding of democracy. So this builds on the work of Dahl. We not only need to have free and fair elections, but these elections need to be institutionally guaranteed. That means um, we need to have a free media that allows to, um, citizens to get information about the different um, perspectives on the political process, as well as civil society uh, groups and um, political parties of a plurality so that citizens can really find uh, different alternatives to choose from in the political process. So it's not enough to just have sham elections uh, where uh, there are only uh, hand-picked, selected few candidates running and major opposition figures are uh, in prison. Mm -hmm. That's not what we would call a democracy. And in order to, to operationalize this, we have already developed the so-called regimes of the world category, typology, uh, which is published in Le Manéal 2018 in uh, the Journal of Politics and Governance. And um, now, what means autocratization? Autocratization means that those democratic regime traits uh, decline either gradually or suddenly. So it doesn't need to be a sudden breakdown. It can also be a gradual erosion. Uh, I will show you some graphs on this uh, in a minute. Uh, so if you look at the graph here, at the picture, you can see that um, autocratization uh, is any movement from the democratic regime spectrum backwards. So it can be from democracy to uh, a democracy of a lesser quality, maybe what we've seen in Poland in recent years. It can also be a democratic breakdown, such as uh, what we've seen in Hungary now. It can also be a sudden breakdown through a military coup. Uh, or it can be autocratic consolidation, that is, when an electoral autocracy, so a country that has multi-party elections, but uh, where, for example, the media is not really free, 
when that country um, breaks down further uh, and, and reduces its democratic quality. That is also autocratization. So it's an umbrella term for, for several processes that can happen in a country. And this autocratization, now we measure with the VDEM data that I introduced to you for 182 polities from uh, 1900 uh, to 2017 here um, in, in this case, as well as on older version of the VDEM data. We use the Electoral Democracy Index that measures the polyarchy concept that I've just introduced, uh, the concept by uh, Dahl uh, about a very ambitious notion of democracy. And this is an index that is continuous and ranges from 0 to 1. Uh, and higher values mean a more democratic uh, setting. Now, autocratization we define as a substantial decline of this Electoral Democracy Index. Um, and um, uh, as this index ranges from 0 to 1, we think that a 10% decline is substantial. We could have taken another threshold, 11% um, or 12%, uh, but these thresholds are necessarily a bit arbitrary, and we think that 10% is less arbitrary than 9% or 10.5%. So, um, and we've really carefully looked at the data to see that really 10% is a good threshold to, first of all, capture all the substantial processes that are happening, but at the same time, not capture those uh, where there might be a lot of noise uh, occurring. Now, uh, what is an autocratization episode? That is the time period over which this substantial decline of about 10% on the Electoral Democracy Index spans. So it has a start and an ending. And uh, the innovation of this paper is really that we develop those coding rules which capture those gradual declines. So a start is a drop of um, uh, more than 0 0.01 on the Electoral Democracy Index. It can continue for over three years without a drop. So for example, uh, if uh, there are no elections, then often things just continue as they were, and then in the next electoral, uh, in the run, like leading up to the next electoral year, you might see some further repression of society. Then um, it uh, um, stops uh, when there's an improvement of more than 0 0.02 or no further drop. And I'm happy to um, answer questions on this, these coding rules in the Q&A session. Um, but I think uh, for a start, this, this is a sufficient um, introduction. It also Turkey, unfortunately, is a very good um, example for autocratization because they've had three autocratization episodes uh, since uh, 1900. So you see here on the slide, you see on the x-axis the timeline, uh, on the y-axis you see uh, the uh, electoral democracy index that ranges from zero, so not so democratic, to one uh, more democratic. The red dots signify autocratization episodes, um, so uh, here three of them. Uh, first, uh, there uh, was a democratization uh, process leading up to uh, 1950, uh, and then a military coup that um, uh, undid uh, these gains. Uh, then again, democratization, military coup, so same pattern, sudden declines. Uh, and then uh, a long, gradual democratization process. And uh, here uh, in 2003, then Erdogan uh, was elected as uh, prime minister. And even then, uh, the country remained uh, for the beginning relatively democratic until he gradually started uh, attacking civil society organizations, attacking journalists. There were some uh, processes against journalists. Uh, then was the crackdown against the Gezi Park uh, protesters. You all remember those scenes. And uh, now uh, Turkey has really lost its status as a uh, democracy. So uh, in order to be qualified as democracy in the VDM world, you have to have an electoral democracy index score of more than 0.5%. And Turkey now is clearly uh, below that threshold, and not only in the VDA measurement, but also in the measurement of many other institutes, such as Freedom House or Polity. So this is the development uh, of Turkey. Um, uh, we have uh, 217 autocratization episodes in um, uh, the world since 1900. 
142 of them are in autocracies, 75 of them are in democracies, and 60 of them include a democratic breakdown. Now, 69 countries have never autocratized, and this is really interesting, um, because uh, these are countries that we can potentially look at um, uh, to learn from. I mean, 33 of them, not so much, because those were autocracies in 2017. Many of them are in something that we would call an autocratization trap. Uh, North Korea, for example, they've just never been uh, dem democratic. However, 36 countries were democracies in 2017. Some of them are very old democracies, like Sweden and Switzerland, and others are new democracies, like Bhutan and Namibia. And I think it's very important to learn from those countries how they have built up their democratic institutions, because they seem to be resilient against democratic um, backsliding or autocratization. Now back to Turkey, uh, you remember here these red dots signify the autocratization episodes and basically what we do in the next slide is that we just summarize how many countries were in autocratization episodes or how many countries had those red dots in a given year, let's say here in 1950, uh, and um, uh, sum those up uh, in a graph that gives the waves of autocratization. So let's so this slide now summarizes uh, the red dots that we saw uh, on the slide before with Turkey. Um, so basically all the autocratization episodes that occur in a given year. The years you see here on the x-axis from 1900 to 2017. And um, uh, the uh, y-axis gives the number of countries that experienced autocratization episodes. So the thick black line is what you want to focus on, which gives you the autocratization uh, episodes in that, uh, during that given time. And um, the first wave of autocratization here uh, now started uh, around uh, in the edge towards the end of the 20s uh, and then throughout the 30s. It was driven by uh, the democratic breakdowns in Europe, uh, mainly in, in Germany, and then also driven by Germany invading other countries. Uh, around it and um, uh, then uh, the second wave of autocratization uh, went uh, on in uh, the 1960s and 70s where uh, which was characterized by military coups mainly in Latin America but also in Africa so in countries that were newly independent uh, that managed to maybe hold a free and fair election once or twice and then broke down to either close autocracy in the military coup or electoral autocracies with very low quality multi-party elections that um, I have uh, mirrored uh, the continent uh, there uh, in the last decades of the last century. Now, um, the third wave of autocratization basically starts here in uh, the 1990, 1990s, 1994 to be precise, with uh, the setbacks that occurred in some countries that were democratizing uh, with the breakdown of the Soviet Union. You see here the uh, gray uh, dashed line that gives you the number of cases of countries that were democratizing in a given year. And um, you see a big peak here, but of course also this is followed then by uh, setbacks uh, through instability that was achieved. So for example, uh, the, the chaos that occurred in Russia in the mid-90s, uh, that sort of marks the start here of, of this reverse wave, uh, and uh, then uh, the spread of it to other uh, Eastern European countries now uh, in the recent years. Uh, as well as to other continents and um, uh, big players also in Latin America, like Venezuela and Brazil. Now let's take a closer look at what characterizes these autocratization episodes. Um, prior to the uh, third wave, so in the first and, 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 and second and, and the years in between, um, you see here uh, the left-hand uh, bar graph, this gives you a breakdown of the share of autocratization episodes by the type of, um, uh, yeah, of, of the process that, that occurred. And um, what you can see here is that uh, in those prior years, they were mainly characterized by military coups, but also by invasion. This, this was mainly Germany invading other countries in um, during the First and Second World War. Um, but also you see autogolfs 
in um, the uh, countries, the auto goals basically are the, the sudden removal of uh, an, an elected government um, uh, by uh, by actually that person that that holds uh, government. So so the removal not of the government mainly maybe but of the procedures that lead to elections and of the legislature, for example, that's supposed to control this government. This would be, for example, uh, Fujimori's autogolp in Peru in 1992, where he uh, decided that he's fed up by being constrained by the legislature and decides that to dissolve the legislature and to postpone postpone elections. Um, so these are autogolps, so sudden moves towards autocracy by the incumbent. Now, uh, since 1994, this has become more gradual. So here in 19, um, in, um, you can see that 70% of the autocratization episodes are actually characterized by these more gradual forms of uh, democratic erosion taking place. Military coups are still around, but uh, they are much uh, less relevant uh, than in prior years. Now, uh, another way of looking at this is um, not looking at the type of the episodes, but actually at the autocratization rate. So the autocratization rate is the annual uh, depletion of the electoral democracy index, so the annual decline of the electoral democracy index. And here's an example for like a military coup on autogob, uh, and sort of a, um, a stylized uh, example that drops uh, from uh, one year to the other, by uh, 40% here in this example. However, if we look at uh, the main contemporary cases of autocratization, and here you see four very prominent uh, examples, they not only have in common uh, that um, they all raised their hand here in this, in this picture, but they all came uh, to power in relatively free and fair elections, and then gradually undermined uh, the um, uh, the preconditions for these elections uh, taking place also in the future. And you see on the top of left side, you see Putin, of course, of, of Russia, you see Orban of Hungary, uh, you see Erdogan of, of Turkey and Chavez of uh, Venezuela. So really, um, uh, these are like the, the protagonists of this current wave of autocratization, and they've all led gradual autocratization processes. So gradual, gradual autocratization episode is perhaps characterized by an annual uh, drop of 0.05% um, of 0.05 uh, or 5% of the electoral democracy index. So um, uh, the depletion is relatively low and it's gradual, as here in the stylized uh, example. And now, in order to be able to analyze this, we take uh, because often we see a combination of gradual and sudden movements. We take uh, the uh, depletion rate at the maximum. So, if you have um, a gradual start, as we've seen, for example, in Turkey uh, prior to the military coup, if you remember, there was like a gradual decline of the um, electoral democracy index, maybe due to instability. But what we take as the relevant for the episode is the maximum rate. So the the sudden uh, decline uh, that occurred afterwards. So this would be 30% here. And now uh, on the next slide, uh, we look at the depletion rate uh, in global uh, comparison. And this is really, really interesting and one of the key innovations of this paper. So you see again on the x-axis the time period from 1900 to 2017. And you see that um, this autocratization rate here on the, on the y-axis that um, this uh, is the red line here and also the red dots. It was really high uh, in the beginning of the last century. You see, for example, uh, Germany, uh, where uh, Hitler removed electoral constraints by uh, in, in, within two years by declines around 30%. You see also the cases of the countries that were invaded, basically overnight democracy uh, was gone, the uh, Netherlands, um, uh, the Czech uh, Czechoslovakia at that uh, point in time. And then also the military coups, Argentina, Chile uh, in the 70s, right? Uh, India, an autogolp, yeah? uh, Peru, the autogolp that I've been talking about. So sudden movements, big drops. And now all the th cases in recent years, they were all more gradual. Venezuela, for example, here, a maximum depletion rate of 10% from one year to the other. It was really like always like tightening the screw uh, a bit uh, 
uh, year over year. So, so a really a gradual uh, process. And these gradual processes, um, uh, yeah, they 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 can be uh, more difficult to notice than the sudden processes. So it's maybe dif more difficult to mobilize resistance again against these processes. Um, against these processes, you all remember these big. Uh, protests against stolen elections that we've seen throughout the European continent over the last decades uh, in Serbia, uh, in many of the post-Soviet uh, countries, uh, the Velvet uh, Revolution uh, and the such. Uh, and uh, we argue in our paper that this is uh, related to the race of democracy in general. So you see here that the thick black line is the global share of democracies. Uh, in um, uh, in a given year, and you see that was relatively low in during the first and the second wave of uh, autocratization. There was around 20% of countries were only democracies, so uh, autocracy was uh, the modal type. And now um, this has changed. This has really clearly uh, improved. So we have more and more uh, democracies in the world, and still, even though we see these autocratization processes happening, so. Uh, democratic countries become a bit less uh, 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 less democratic. That's what we're seeing. We see some breakdowns as well, but other countries also become more democratic. And we argue that because democracy is the mode globally, because democracy is so prominent and so relevant, and that's why leaders uh, erode uh, democracy only gradually, because uh, because they still have to pretend and to to make it uh, appear as if they would uh, be uh, Democrats uh, in order not to lose the support of their population. So if Putin, for example, even Putin, who, who is, uh, has been a, a very strong leader for, for decades now, even if he, he couldn't just say, oh, I'm going to abolish elections tomorrow, then people would, would really raise up. And even the rigged elections that he holds, um, people mobilize uh, around them, um, uh, have protests around those election dates. So it's a very dangerous game for him to, uh, on the one hand, um, wanting to limit the opportunities of the opposition so that he gets re-elected re in, in parentheses uh, again and again. But at the same time, he needs to make it appear as if the country was still democratic. So this is sort of the game that we're seeing uh, these days. Now, the good news of this game is that uh, actually um, the uh, implications and the consequences of autocratization on the level of democracy are less severe than in the past. And this is what this graph uh, shows. So it shows the total drop of the electoral democracy index during an autocratization episode. And um, uh, here on the y-axis. And you can see that uh, this, these are the, 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 the black... Um, uh, the black lines, the black uh, dashed lines, and the and the um, triangles here on the on the graph. This is the third wave, uh, and you see that the median uh, drop of the electoral democracy index is around 20% during an autocratization episode. That is bad, but still, that means that in those countries uh, you still have uh, sources. Uh, for resistance, you have uh, resources that the opposition has because the um, pro forma, those countries still hold multi party elections. A good example is Turkey, where uh, yes, the electoral democracy index has dropped a lot, but still opposition parties continue to function to some extent and have been able to win uh, local elections in recent years. So that means that the sources of resilience are still there. And uh, uh, before the third wave, that was not always the case. So uh, here, I mean, you see, you see these uh, these drastic autocratization processes led by uh, Hitler uh, throughout Europe, where basically you uh, he managed to to squash to to destroy uh, any uh, democratic uh, pockets uh, within Germany and the countries that the Nazis um, occupied uh, in that time period. So the sources of resistance are there, that's, that's the good news, uh, and um, uh, that is something that, that we, uh, why we might be able to say that the glass is still half full. Now let's take a look at, um, uh, moving a bit away from um, this paper and democratization, let's 
take a look at what aspects of democracy have actually changed over the last 10 years. So let's just take a, a look over the last 10 years. So this is built now on our uh, democracy report that we publish in spring every year, building on the new version of the VDEM dataset. This year's uh, title is Autocratization Searches, Resistance Grows. And um, we can see here um, that uh, the um, indicators that are mainly uh, declining uh, are found uh, here in the lower part of this graph. And um, uh, this summarizes the number of countries that had substantial and significant declines over the last 10 years. And we see that mainly freedom of expression is uh, targeted by autocratizers. So this is the media, the pluralism in the media, really a worrisome development because uh, we need uh, the media to report about the political process so that, it, that democracy can function. Also, the quality of deliberation uh, has declined. I'll, I'll be more specific on that uh, in a mi minute. This is something like hate speech, for example, polarization of society and freedom of association. And also now, to some extent, uh, how clean and free and fair elections actually are. So this, these are the, the, the indices uh, that have declined the most. What has uh, remained uh, very similar is suffrage uh, and sort of formal parts of the uh, electoral um, process. Also, there are more lo local elections, more regional elections, judicial constraints, and, and the question of whether or not officials are actually uh, elected have remained about the same overall. So these are things that are uh, very slow moving and that cannot be uh, substantially uh, abolished and constrained overnight. This gives an even more detailed um, overview of, of what has happened and declined over the last 10 years. And we see again that the indicators that make up these indices of freedom of uh, expression, those are the ones that uh, have really declined the most. So uh, the media censorship efforts uh, has increased, the harassment of journalists has increased, the um, freedom of academic and cultural expression, as well as uh, repression of civil society. So these are these are the uh, the ones that that have declined uh, the most. Now uh, uh, the same uh, has uh, occurred, or we see the same pattern in the OSCE world that uh, the electoral democracy has declined over uh, recent years. And within the electoral democracy index, it is mainly the uh, freedom of expression index, so the one that carries all the media variables that has declined. Whereas the liberal component index and also the clean election index is actually uh, relatively uh, at, this, at a similar level uh, over, uh, over the last years. And I, I, I think this is important to, to point out because some of the protagonists of this new wave of autocratization, like Orban, for example, actually claim that what they're doing is still democratic, but it's just an illiberal form of democracy. And I think this data clearly shows that this is not accurate. What they're actually doing is not only building back the liberal constraints uh, on the executive, but they are also uh, attacking the very core of democracy, and that the very core of democracy is freedom of speech, is uh, pluralism in the media, is uh, journalists that can do their job without being harassed, uh, and are, is also freedom of association for civil society groups. Because uh, as this girl here points out, uh, you know, first they came for journalists, uh, and then we don't know what happened after that. So. Uh, really, the, the uh, pluralism in the media um, and uh, freedom of expression is at the heart of what democracy is about, because without uh, plural information, voters cannot make an informed choice. <laughs> 